Hi, this is Noel Serrano with the Gala Lighthouse. What exactly is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is God, fully God, not partially or almost God. And he resides in any believer in Christ. He is the reason by which God maintains an immediate intimate relationship with those who understand his spiritual presence within them as being complete and of the same substance as the other two persons in the Trinity, God the Father and God the Son. God's big, right? He's huge. Unimaginably gigantoid. And as we naturally have the sense of God being out there somewhere, residing in the heavens, somewhat detachedly overseeing and directing everything that happens everywhere in the universe, we have an intuitive image of God as the impenetrable, the inscrutable, the unknowable. And that makes sense. We are, after all, talking about the forever beyond here, about the Alpha and Omega, the maker of all that is, has been, and ever will be. No surprise, then, that we have this very profound sense of eternal otherness about God. And in a very real sense, that is who God is. God the Father is God above. But through Jesus Christ, we're given a vastly different way to appreciate and know God. Here is God as also fully human, God as anything but detached from our fears and trials. Here is God loving us so much that he incarnated himself as one of us and then willfully allowed himself to be brutally killed so that we may begin to grasp the depth of his commitment to our present and eternal well-being. Even if we can't fully understand the whole of Jesus, we know that as the God-man he has personified human earthly action, persuasion, conviction, love, anger, anguish, that in sending Jesus, God has revealed himself as someone with whom we can definitely relate and even identify. More important, Jesus proves that God is someone who can forever identify with us. This is a God whom we know knows every last bit of trouble we will ever suffer. First, we have God the Father above us, and then we have God the Son down here on earth, abiding where we live and breathe and die. God with us. But ultimately, physically, Jesus left us, didn't he? After his stunning resurrection, the Son returned to heaven. Whereas the Bible tells us, he resumed his place next to the Father. And then here we are, left without the God in flesh that we once had walked among us. That breaks our hearts. And over time, it's also bound to make it harder for us to properly remember and honor God. We humans are, after all, inclined to be more impressed and persuaded by what's before us than but by what seems to be behind us. God, of course, knows this about us. He knows we can't live on memories and ancient stories alone. He knows that in order to keep us inspired and engaged, we need something dynamic, immediate, real, vibrant, deeply individualized, and profoundly personal. 
And so out of his infinite love for us, he arranged to leave behind in the heart of every one of his believers the entirety of himself. That miraculous, clear, unmistakably holy presence inside each of us that we call the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God within. He's all of God, as close to any believer as his or her next heartbeat. From John 14, this is Jesus speaking. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. The Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him or knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. But the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Mysterious, isn't it? But wonderful. Especially when you begin to call, call upon the power of the Holy Spirit to assist you in whatever you do. And now for something a little bit more complicated. Or perhaps not so complicated. If you happen to be someone who is all at once a husband, father, and brother, or a wife, mother, and sister. In the way we usually mean it, when we talk about something making sense, the reality of the divine trinity doesn't make sense at all to the finite mind. Even the word trinity is a graceful melding of fundamentally incompatible concepts to meaning three and unity, meaning one. The full nature of God is not supposed to be rationally comprehensible to us. That it isn't is part and parcel of this majestic mysticism of Christianity. The things in our lives that make sense to us are those wholly contained in our physical, mechanical world. Pencil sharpeners make sense. Leveling off the foundation of a house before you build it makes sense. Flossing your teeth every night makes sense. God, though, is hardly about the kind of logical accessibility. God is not subject to the kinds of objective, verifiable evaluations most everything else in the world is. God does make sense. All logic and reason is based upon and born out of his very nature. But God is no more contained or defined by the human notion of sense than the Pacific Ocean is contained in or defined by a child's backer full of seawater. Think about how much completely vital stuff in your life doesn't make sense. Like sleep, for instance. People have been sleeping since forever. And to this day, scientists have just about zero idea what sleeping actually is. Sleep is simply not clear. What it does, why it does it, and what's it for. First, your conscience awake fully functional, going about your life. And then, as if you have been suddenly been unplugged, you lie down and lose consciousness. Except you don't even completely do that. You dream, whatever that is. This is Noel Serrano with the Gala Lighthouse. And the following has been a presentation of the Gala Foundation.